Hi guys, it is a cold, foggy, dreary Monday morning here in Paradise in the Santa Cruz Mountains here on Labor Day 2016, Monday, September 5th, 2016. I was here one year ago. It was 105 degrees on Labor Day here in the Santa Cruz Mountains last year. I'm in my goose down vest and my shivering little dog bringing you what I bring you every Monday morning, Labor Day or no, and that is my economic meltdown roundup rant, where I simply go on the finance pages of the mainstream media, Yahoo News, to see how the global industrial economy, otherwise known as the New World Order, is pulling out all the stops to bring down a planet since it is Labor Day, I want to share just one Labor Day story. This isn't so much how they're bringing down a planet, just how they're bringing down a country from Market Watch. I like this story. This Labor Day, let's acknowledge why our job creation machine is broken. It's Labor Day, and despite unemployment at under 5% and nearly 15 million private sector jobs created since February 2010, nobody is celebrating. Workforce participation which is the real measure of unemployment, is stuck near historic lows. Six million people are part-timers but want to work full-time. Wage growth remains subdued. Subdued, yes. But presidential can both presidential candidates have talked a good game about jobs in the economy, but neither address the real problem. The U.S. job creation machine wants the envy of the world is broken because American corporations cannot create steady, well-paying jobs here in the good old USA while also providing maximum returns to their investors who are the ones really in charge. And it goes on to break that down, but uh, I've got to move along to more of the subject of how the New World Order is bringing down the planet uh, here on Labor Day. This is Bloomberg's offering. Since Bloomberg doesn't point it out, I'm going to leave it to you. If I've been doing my job, I'm going to leave it to you to connect the dots between this story and the collapse of a planet. Americans fire up their grills for cheap burgers as beef prices tumble. There you go. Um, <clears throat> After savoring cheap burgers all summer, Americans are enjoying the lowest ground beef prices for this time of year since 2011. And take a wild guess why. With the U.S. set for a year of record meat production, especially beef cattle production, Prices are in a downward spiral for beef, pork, and chicken as suppliers compete for space on the dinner plate. Bigger supplies of beef cattle mean prices for ground beef are tumbling. Hmm, what a surprise. This, this is real rocket science. This is one of these uh, hamburger huggers, Alton Kalo, some beef analyst. Quote, you have a glut of meat protein out there and slaughter 
on the cattle side continues to be large. Yes, cattle ranchers started expanding their herds to capture record profits in 2014. Now those extra animals are arriving in droves. U.S. beef cattle slaughter rates have been up as much as 10% over last year in recent weeks. Th this little guy here will not eat his Alpo beef stew, by the way. Uh, he is not a beef eater, apparently. Good for you, Sancho Panza, saving the plant. So that is how, you know, all these greenies talking about how we need to be eating less beef to save the planet. Uh, from Chris Hedges to Al Gore, if there is any clueless moron on this planet thinking uh, that, uh, that human beings are going to be eating less beef going into the collapse of this planet. Sancho Panza, who will not even eat his Alpo beef stew, tell something to these goddamn clueless morons. Warning, warning, alert. Yes, thank you, Sancho, the non-beef eater. Okay. Of course, the probably the biggest story about the uh, planet eaters taking down the planet, all sorts of stories, including the latest from just this morning, about that big ass fracking quake there in Oklahoma. It looks like a uh, the governor of Oklahoma has declared a disaster area now in Oklahoma from this 5.6 quake that could be felt from Nebraska to Texas, just the latest. Uh, these goddamn frackers, you, you know, whenever I read these stories, I, I know you're sick of hearing this about this Hopi prophecy book uh, that, that I was reading last spring where just buried away this hundred-year-old Hopi guy back in the 1970s was telling the author of the book that you are soon going to see earthquakes in Texas. And when you start seeing earthquakes in Texas, you will know that we are in the end times. And you are seeing plenty of goddamn earthquakes in Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, and you will see plenty more until we really do get to the end of this. But anyway, as long as I mentioned uh, Big Oil, this this story from, uh, I guess it's just from Yahoo News Finance. What is Big Oil up to? Let's, let's, just, let's just get to the big picture, and then we can look at some examples of how this is playing out, do some dot connecting. Okay, despite, no, this is Reuters news, looking at the big picture. Despite recent cuts, big oil to expand production into the 2020s. Yeah, and the 2030s and the 2040s and the 2050s until the whole goddamn planet goes Venus. Never mind the drop in crude prices, huge spending cuts, and thousands of job losses. The world's top oil and gas companies are set to produce more than ever for some time. Hmm, yes. Uh, overall production at the world's seven biggest oil and gas companies is set to rise by around 9% between now and 2018, according to analyst estimates. Uh, and the increased production of both oil and gas should boost cash flow and secure generous dividend payouts for investors. 
Are, 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 we, are we drawing some dots here, guys, from, from the uh, first story I read? Oh, Jesus. Uh, quoting uh, some Barclays analyst, quote, There are a lot of projects coming on stream over the next three years that will support cash flow and ultimately dividends. All right. And then they break it all down through all these goddamn planet eaters and all of their big, big plans all over this planet. Uh, so how how are the this increase in oil and gas production playing out? Let's look at some uh, specific ones. A lot of versions of this story. Let's let's start out in our own country. Uh, in North Dakota, Native American pipeline protest gets violent as oil company quote rips up sacred land. Yes, it does. <clears throat> A protest turned violent when oil pipeline company bulldozers began to dig up land that Native Americans say includes sacred ancestral sites. Video from the scene showed company security officers threatening protesters with dogs. Yes, they're going to send Sancho Panza to bite your Native American ass. Hundreds of Native Americans from tribes across the U.S. have set up a camp in southern North Dakota near the first phase of construction of a four-state, $3.8 billion oil pipeline to be built by Dallas-based energy transfer partners. As I've been reporting already, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers uh, under Barack Obama approved the pipeline, the about 1,200 mile pipeline, allowing it to run under the Missouri River very close to the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation. <clears throat> Protesters fear the construction will disturb sacred sites and contaminate drinking water for the tribe and millions more people and a pipeline leak would be, make that will be, when it happens, an ecological disaster. And this is one more example, as I mentioned, of Farrakh Obama, the Save the Planet president, making climate change uh, one of the bulwarks of his uh, environmental legacy. This is Barack Obama saving the planet uh, from climate change. Okay, let's go. Let, let, let's, let's one more from Big Oil and then we will uh, we will see what the other planets are up to. I, in, anybody who does not understand all of these, th this article looking at in, into this little country of Guyana, this is AP down there in South America, this is an excellent, excellent article drawing the dots between oil development and not just the environmental catastrophe of offshore oil drilling, but how it plays out throughout the economy, how it leads to global conflict. Anyway, I'm going to read just a little bit of this for anybody not understanding this. <clears throat> Dreams of wealth and fears of problems as Guyana finds oil. Major oil and gas deposits found in the deep seabed uh, off the coast of the hemisphere's third poorest nation have reignited a decades-old 
territorial dispute with uh, struggling Venezuela. Yes. Uh, so what is going on in the little country of Guyana? There is a surge of excitement about an anticipated economic windfall from major oil and gas deposits found in the deep seabed 120 miles off the coast, as well as worries about the, disrupt the disruption and conflicts it might bring. Hopes are high that fuel siphoned in a few years' time uh, from more than three miles below the sea surface might be an antidote to the entrenched poverty and underdevelopment in the country. Um, quote, anybody does understand this, this is minor Cosmo Santo who understands what this means. We will have billions in foreign reserves and our population, our population is going to swell big time. There you go. As uh, so, Exxon Mobil is behind this one, announcing a world-class oil discovery of somewhere between 800 million and 1.4 billion barrels of oil is what they are uh, ha uh, is going on. Uh, there's this one place that I really like, this dot that they, okay, here's just one more dot and then we're gonna move on. Okay, <clears throat> for anyone who doesn't understand how this works, some of the hoped for riches will go toward building a 350 mile jungle road from the capital to Brazil, opening up Guyana's rugged, mineral rich interior. Are, are, are we following this, how, how they're taking the oil money from three miles at the bottom of the ocean, 120 miles off the coast of, uh, of Guyana, assuming uh, Venezuela doesn't just go and take it over, and they're taking that money to ram a road through the Amazon rainforest to open up the interior country to mining. Are, are, are we seeing a pattern here? And you better believe uh, that, that China is licking their chops over all of this. But anyway, uh, we're going to look at what some other planet eaters are up to on this Labor Day other than the big oil and cattle ranchers. Let's see. Uh, what do we have going with palm oil showing up in the mainstream media. Uh, you know, palm oil be behind all of these, uh, these wildfires over there in Indonesia in the dry season every year. We hear this every year, year after year after year during the dry season, these goddamn planet eaters going over there and burning all of this rainforest and peat forest to plant more palm oil, making all of this, this uh, air pollution and wildfires. Anyway, what's going on over there this week? <clears throat> Indonesia environment team threatened with death while investigating Hayes. Dozens of Indonesian men suspected of being hired by an oil palm plantation company threatened to kill environmental investigators checking on fires in Sumatra. 
The incident illustrates the difficulties, yes, Indonesia, Indonesia faces tackling the illegal burning of vegetation to clear land for palm oil and pulp and paper plantations that causes clouds of smoke every dry season, um, which is at times blanket the region. The, minister, the environment ministry said a group of up to 100 men <clears throat> detained seven investigators uh, and threatened to burn them alive and dump their bodies in a river at an oil palm plantation. The team was following up on satellite images, you know, showing these illegal wildfires. Uh, the ministry said there were, quote, strong indications, strong indications, uh, the, these guys threatening to burn these government investigators alive and dump their dead bodies into a river were hired by the oil palm company. Do you think so? Okay. From there, what is going on with the bushmeat? So let's move to Sub-Saharan Africa. Look at the bushmeat industry, the loggers, and the charcoal industry. What are they up to? World's largest gorillas. One step from going extinct. The world's largest gorillas have been pushed to the brink of extinction by a surge of illegal hunting, mostly for, for the bush meat and the gorilla skin trade, in the Democratic Republic of Congo and are now critically endangered. Uh, I guess they're down to 5,000 this population, down from 16,000 to 5,000. Uh, uh, four out of six of the Earth's great apes are now critically endangered, only one step away from going extinct, including the eastern gorilla, the western gorilla, the Bornean orangutan and the Sumatran orangutan, while chimpanzees and bonobos are only endangered. The causes for this war, hunting, and loss of land uh, in the past 20 years. He's, I think he wants to go get him a rat. All right, if I let you go, take off. Go get your rat. All right, from gorilla killers to, let's go from gorillas to dolphins. What's, what's good, or should we say bad for gorillas, also bad for, for dolphins. Gee, uh, for the 14th year in a row, here we have this story on Labor Day. The cove hunt is on again, which means dolphins are in danger. Yep, for dolphins swimming off the southwest coast of Japan, the end of summer can mean the end of their lives. That is because the annual dolphin hunting season on the cove in Taji, Japan began on September 1st when fishers drive in corner pods of the marine mammals into the cove where they are captured and sold to marine parks or killed for their meat. And again, I, I've been ranting about this since Humpty Dumpty tried beginning that, that, that you know, the, the point about this, if we, if this planet, if humanity cannot put an end to this 
unadulterated horseshit. If, if we are unable and, and so morally corrupt as a species that we cannot put an end to this crime, uh, what, what the fuck do you think we're going to do about uh, Amazon deforestation and climate change? There's about 12 evil motherfuckers making a buck off of this carnage every year. About 12 of these goddamn morally corrupt Japanese planet eaters. And the fact that seven and a half billion humans can't put an end to this shit it is, it is more than anything is just an indication how completely hopeless the situation is on this planet. Good lord. From dolphins to seaweed. Seaweed farming. A sudden slimy success needs greener rules. Jesus, it's never ending. Seaweed farming needs tighter regulation to limit damage to the environment after booming into a $6.4 billion business with uses in everything from sushi to toothpaste led by China. South Korea, Indonesia, and the Philippines, seaweeds surge in recent years has seemed environmentally friendly. Detected. Take precautions. But emerging evidence shows that seaweed it can cause harm and spread diseases and pests Blah, 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 here is one Asian seaweed brought to Hawaii to farm seaweed has smothered coral reefs by out-competing local plants. Blah, blah, blah. And from seaweed, we're going to wind up our this week's Labor Day edition of our economic meltdown roundup rant from seaweed to pistachios. <laughs> you know, and I've got a whole big ass bag of pistachios. This, this isn't so much how pistachio farming is taking down the planet. It's just how uh, pistachio farmers are taking down pistachio farms as Iran's pistachio farms are dying of thirst. The pistachio trees, this is Sirhan, Iran. The pistachio trees at this village in southern Iran are long dead, bleached white by the sun. The underground water reserves that used to irrigate the trees sucked dry by decades of over farming and waste. The last farmers left with their families 10 years ago, and the village now has the look of an abandoned Martian colony. The dome-roofed, mud-walled homes are crumbling. Once green fields are now nothing but dirt furrows and the only sign of life left in the village is a couple of drifters camping out in an old storehouse. Uh, villages in southern, in southern Iran, cities have grown rich in the past from pistachios, but time is running out for the industry as unconstrained farming, meaning over irrigating, and climate change have taken a devastating toll. 
near Surhan a long line of enormous sinkholes like bomb craters mark the points where an underground aquifer was c pumped completely dry and the ground simply collapsed. And uh, what is the bottom line of this story and this rant? This is a, a former pistachio farmer named Sharif getting ready to go out of business. Quote, the problem is more dangerous than people realize. There is just not enough oversight, meaning on this about sucking water out of the ground. What is happening around here is a catastrophe. It has reached a crisis point. Yes, it has. It has reached a crisis point. Uh, oh shit, my battery's running out, but this is going to wrap me up this crisis point in my economic meltdown roundup round. I hope I have just enough batteries to come back with you with some good news from sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, but I better get on it before I lose my battery for this week's edition of my economic meltdown roundup rant. Bye, guys.